come, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to American Idiots. Welcome back to TJ Warren TV, the 53rd episode of the American mm -hmm. Idiot Show. And the only person that could follow up the one and only Lee Gunner. We got him. We got him, people. We got him. We got him like we got Osama bin Laden. <laughs> we so that's, the only, dead, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> what is he's alive and chicken, and he looks pretty. But damn ladies, no, no, actually, that well, who was that? Was or was that Saddam when they were just like, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are not trying to clip Northside, but Northside is here. Big up Northside. How you doing, bro? Yo, big up. Listen, you're, you're probably not wrong. The top gooners, I probably am Osama Bin Laden. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it, is, it is what it is, man. Love for having me on. Big up to both of you. Big up to the chat. Yeah, man. And uh, love for having me on, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. And Dow, my guy, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Happy Friday. Sun shining. North side's on the show. We got the beautiful people in the chat. And we got a big game coming up on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I know. We're going to talk about it. We got legends in the chat already. Connor is out living his life, by, by the way, people. We are one short tonight, social. but it's because Connor was just like, I'm going to go drink with my friends. I'm like, man, I wish I, I wish I was young. I wish I could do that shit. Right. It's pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, big up Lenny. Big up Ola. Ola's in the chat. Big up Ola every single time. Yes, yeah. absolutely hit those likes, people. Hit those likes. Joanne Smith is here. Big, big up. up Joanne, every time she is everywhere. Big up everybody watching. We know everybody and their mother are live right now. So make sure that you are smashing the likes and thank you for tuning in. Northside, Northside, are you as gassed as our buddy Hugh Sam is for us to win this game? Ready? Good luck to you in the next round as well. We'll see who you guys draw. But I was supporting Arsenal yesterday and it's Arsenal. Awesome. Arsenal FC, we're by far the greatest team. Damn, you guys don't even value Tom at five pounds. I... He he's he's Arsenal's biggest fan, bro. I, I don't I don't want to hear any of this. Oh, Liverpool underdog. He's a secret Arsenal fan. I've been running this agenda for a while, but no. Tell me how you're feeling about going into this match, bro. I am like I feel oddly confident, but we can mm. get into that. But uh, am I? Uh, <clears throat> What, what do you think about the whole atmosphere around this game right now? Are we getting too gassed up for a one nil or for a one nil Man City or a one one draw? Like, give me, give us your thought on it, man. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I think this could be the start of us seeing whether we have actually changed from last season or not. Um, I look at it and there's reasons for Arsenal to win and there's reasons for Man City to win. I think we're the team that are in form. We're the team that are doing very, very well in the Premier League. We're looking more convincing the way that we're playing football. You know, I've got to give Arteta credit in that aspect. We are, you know, putting teams to bed and we are performing really, really well. The team is gelling well. And um, so, yeah, coming into this game, we're, we're looking better in that aspect. Um, our run so far has looked a lot more convincing. But with Man City, at the end of the day, they are holding champions. They've got world-class players that have been there, done that. And they've got a manager that's been there and done that. And they have a team that knows what it takes mentally to get over the line. Um, and I think this is not a game about quality, but a game about mentality. Because um, do we have the quality to beat them? We've already beat them before. You know, I think with Arsenal, it's always about mentality. Um, and, and I go back to, you know, our run at the end of the season last season. Too many draws against teams that we beat earlier on in the season. Losing to Nottingham Forest. That's all about mentality, not quality. You know, player for player all over the pitch were better. But I just feel like it was the pressure of having to win to get over the line got to the players. And and people ask me, oh, you know, have I changed my mind on, on this Arsenal team? Well, I, I look at it, not 93% top of the league. I look at it, have we changed that 7%, which is getting over the line? Even if it's ugly, I no longer care about performances. I just care about mm -hmm. getting the points, maximum points. So have, is, is that mentality changed? You know, can we get it over the line? Can we win ugly? Can we step up when it's a must-win game and not crumble under the pressure? If we do that, then I think that is progression from last season because that is where we bottled it. Um, yeah. But I, I think that there are things to be confident about. I think even though we don't have Partey, that is good with long-range passing. We've got Jorginho that offers that now. We have Declan Rice that can do the, the Xhaka role but can also defend. 
is not incompetent defensively. We've got Havertz that, even though I don't rate him, I think he's a striker that does have an attribute to the way that he plays that nobody else brings in terms of our attack. He can head the ball. And I'm not saying he's world-class at it, but he's decent at it. And we can't say the same for Trossard. We can't say the same for Saka. We can't say the same for Jesus when you're talking about header of the ball. Right. Um, we've got Kivio in that left-back situation. So we're looking a lot stronger defensively. Our defensive, our gr This defensive record has been upheld with Kivio and Rea in goal. So those additions have been positive so far. You know, so these are positives as to why we can be confident going into the game. But at the same time, like I said, Foden has stepped up this season for Man City. Um, everybody was saying Gundo's left. Gundo was stepping up for Man City around this time last season. Um, the last stages of the Champions League. Foden has been keeping them in this race while, while KDB has been out. Um, exactly. You've always got Haaland that can always score. We saw that chance that he got against Man United, half chance to Haaland. He buries it. They've now got somebody that has that. You know, um, a proper goal scorer. They've got KDB that can always have a, a moment of brilliance. So they still got individuals that can win them games. Rodri is known to, to score a banger, you know, at, at random times. So they've got individuals that can get them over the line and they've got the best manager in the league. So this is the thing. Um, and they've got the mentality to go up um, to the wire. I mean, they never crumbled in all the seasons they were going neck and neck with Liverpool. These are things that we don't have. So there's there's reasons for and against both teams. You know, that's why right. I think ultimately or probably may be a draw. If anyone wins it, I think it may be Man City. Yeah, I just think like this is I, I'm hearing a lot of people say, oh, yeah, draw like the people asking me. And I know you've been asking getting asked this because I know Steve asked you this about an hour ago. Would you take a draw right now? And I say absolutely not. Absolutely mm. not. I think whoever win and, and Dal, I want to come to you after this, man. Um. After that, like it, whoever wins this game, I think is going to be the the team that that challenges Liverpool. I think Liverpool has the easiest run out of out of all the teams, and all the Liverpool fans can play. Oh no, you know we're just we're just like what what's the word? Scrappy old Liverpool. We just have a we have a really really difficult. Run out. We're going to do our best. No, you're in the you are in the best position to win it. They only have Europa to worry about. Manchester City have freaking. Real Madrid and an FA Cup to worry about, and we have B Bayern Munich to worry about. Mm -hmm. So to say that Liverpool don't have the advantage is ingenuous. I think um, whoever gets this, whoever wins this game, gets six points. It's a six-pointer. We have a leg up on we have a leg up on them if we win. And I don't see outside of this match where either City or Liverpool drop points. I really don't. You could say, oh, yeah, we're going to go up. They're going to go up against Aston Villa, but Aston Villa can mail in a stinker anytime that they want. So, anytime anybody comes to me and says, oh, yeah, no, we can take a draw and still win, I don't think so. I don't mm. think so. If we draw, I think we're finished. And I don't mean to be that, like, Mr. Negative. Well, I guess I am Mr. Negative, but I don't mean to be Mr. Negative here. But let's be real. We got, we have to win this game. I think we have to win this game. Before we go to you, Del. Before you yeah. go to real quick, sorry, sorry, man, I don't mean to interrupt, but I need to call out these super chats just real, real quick. Big up all of, every single time. Big love, TJ Dallin, Northside. We got to beat City. Yeah, no, we have to. We have to. Big up all of, make sure that you are subscribing to the Fight Week show, people. I just got to get your link in the description and all the descriptions. All of, you are the absolute man. Really, really appreciate it. Um, he also dropped another two dollar super chat or two pound mm. super chat saying three years ago, Claude passed. Keep resting, big man. I did not know Claude. But he is an absolute legend. You know he's resting in peace, and he is he is cheering on our boys he, tomorrow. Yeah, he would be absolutely ecstatic to see where we're at right now. Yeah, he would be over the moon. Shout out Claude and his family. Absolutely, absolutely. But um, and by yeah. the way, <laughs> what do you, what do you think, man? What do you think? Yeah, I think. Well, I think that you know, I think what Northside said about the seven percent was absolutely spot on. I don't think I've heard that from anyone else. Talk about how do we improve the seven percent, and we've gone through it. I think we've done that with the addition of Declan Rice. Um, and I'm, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had our show with our man Gunner, and I said, you know what? If there's ten games to go in the season, you know, I'm not going to say it's a free hit, but there is going to be difficult games for Liverpool and City to to do as well in the next, you know, 10, 11 games. My thought then. <laughs> was that maybe a draw 
isn't the end of the world because it's going to even out in a week or two, possibly, right? Because you start yeah. looking at the, you, you can look at some of the schedules from all three of the teams and say, okay, here's an opportunity for Liverpool to drop points. City could drop points. We could drop points. And you start, you know, doing the math in your head. So I thought about that for after Lee's show. And then I thought to myself, after I put the whiskey down, um, <laughs> what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> No, I and I have, you know, I could be Mr. Negative, you know, part two. You guys are absolutely a thousand percent right. We absolutely have to win this game. There's no, there's no kowtowing to, you know, oh, the, the, the lads let us down or this or that, or there's just some mistakes were made and we drew or we lost. No, we have to absolutely put in the performance of a lifetime coming up on Sunday and we have to get a gap. It's so important to me that we get a gap in the points to keep going. And the finished part, that's where I'm still hesitant, ER. That's where I'm still hesitant because there's lots of football to be played. There's still 10 weeks of football, guys, almost two months to be played, a month and a half. And, and things will change. But that doesn't, that doesn't deter us from doing what we got to do Sunday, you guys, no matter what. And we've got to play absolutely mistake-free football. It's not about, I'm so worried about Foden or KDB and Rodri. You know, they are Im impact players, but it's on us to not make the mistakes, to let them be impact players. And that's what we've seen in the past. The Tommy Asu back pass, right? The Ram no. thing, Right? I mean, that's the kind of shit that pisses all of us off. And we're like, what are you thinking? And the North Side starts slamming slippers, you know, for four-hour streams. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's what well, it's just it's it's gotta be mistake free. It has to be mistake free. You know what I mean? Then we yeah. can win, but we have to have mistake free football. You gotta make the easy pass, not the difficult pass. Look for the open man, not the man that's crowded. Play simple football and we can beat them. But when we start making mistakes and thinking we're more than we are, we're gonna lose. And that's yeah. that's kind of my thought on. I've, I've really dwelled on this since our last show with guns, and you know, before I was kind of in the mode of it's a, it's a free hit because at the end of the day, they they can beat us. So if we get a draw, that's a plus. But at this point in time, you see players coming in, coming back from being injured, etc. I mean, there's it's got to be cutthroat, mistake free football, and that's what we got to do to lift the trophy. No, absolutely, I agree, and and I think we're capable of right, doing it though. Injured. Because you you're you're looking at a, a Man City uh, team that is considerably weakened by injuries right now. Um, obviously, Kyle Walker going to be out, but I mean, you could even argue that's that could be an advantage for City because he really hasn't been played playing very well lately. He did not have a good game against Liverpool, um, and just in terms of in terms of what you would expect from Kyle Walker, he's been mid, um, in my right. opinion. But right. I mean, and but you know, John Stones is going to be out. That's a huge miss. They're going right. to be depending on Ruben, Ruben Diaz, who's been in and out of the lineup, you know, and and you have a KDB that hasn't been firing on all all, all cylinders, all team, and, and, and don't all season. And don't get me wrong, I am not. I respect Man City. So, uh, I am not right. going to come out here. Right. I'm not going to come out here and 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 start shitting on one of the best midfielders to ever play in the Premier League. That's not what I'm doing. What I am talking about though is form. That is what I am talking about. Mm -hmm. We have it in terms of a full eleven. I think our form is better than Man City's right now. And that's we have to play that that form that pro form mistake free football away. Otherwise, I think we're toast. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a stinky draw one one. I'll give my actual prediction here at the end here. But I mean, do do injuries come into this um, for you, Northside at all, or do you think do you think I mean it's like been there, done that for Guardiola at this point? I think that's all mind games. Um, I think the majority of them will will be all right. I was speaking to some City fans and they were saying that only Carl Walker, no, yeah, Carl Walker and Stones, but they only consider Stones to be the big miss because Carl Walker this season has been really poor defensively. Yeah. I think he's kind of done at the top end of the game, to be honest with you. Uh, he's getting on now, uh, early 30s. I think he's kind of done at the top, top, top level. Um, but yeah, they're kind of happy that, that Walker's not available because I think most City fans wouldn't put him in their starting lineup. I think City, where they can be got at, is defensively, and he's been one of the, the, the key players that have been making big mistakes alongside Vardio as well. He's another one that's been getting cooked as well on the left-hand side, which isn't completely his fault because that's not his mm. natural position. I think they'll be more than more than okay. 
um, in terms of injuries. I think they'll be all right. And um, yeah, I, I don't really see this kind of, oh, I'll take a draw. Because if you look at our running, we got Wolverhampton. Now, a lot of Arsenal fans will be snobby and say, oh, well, we'll definitely beat them. When you're in this late run, teams that have something to play for are the most dangerous, whether it's to play to avoid relegation, to play for some sort of uh, Europa Conference League or Europa League or Champions League spot. Those teams are dangerous because they're trying, they now have an objective to try and get somewhere. Teams that are kind of in the middle and are safe from the drop, but they're not, they're too far away from getting a Europa League spot. Those teams are kind of all right because they're kind of coasting. Yeah, team, A team like Wolves, they're not that far off. I think they're like three, four points away from West Ham to get a, at least a, a conference league. And for them, that's big. For Wolverhampton, that's big. That's extra revenue, extra games, more publicity, etc. You know what I mean? And they do have, as a Premier League team, they do have a, a good chance of winning the conference league when you look at the teams in the conference league. Coming up against Wolverhampton, that could be a banana skin. And a banana skin in this run could even sure. be a draw. But too many draws is just as bad as losing games. Right, right. You know what I'm Fact. saying? So for me, Wolverhampton is a big one that we could that could be a slip. Chelsea, that's a London derby. Mm. Of course, we'll put what Arsenal 80%, you know, to win that game. But that 20%, you never know. You never know. Do you know what I'm saying? You never ever know. And they could just stifle us. Like I said, if they come to stink it out and stink out a draw, that ain't good enough for us because it's a free horse race. Then you look at Tottenham, form goes completely out the window. Yeah, we, we, we've lost to Tottenham even in seasons where we've gone on to win the league. So I mean, even when we've been the better club, you know yeah. what I mean? The North London derby, you can't call that. It's a very hard game to call. Then you have Man United. And people, oh, well, it's Man United. Well, that same dead Man United, which is dead, was able to beat Liverpool. That right. same dead Man United yeah. last season, when we first played Man United, were able to beat us. So... This Man United team ain't going to allow us all the space in behind. They'll, look at how they performed against Liverpool. Everyone behind the ball, you know, stinking it out, stinking it out, stinking it out and trying to hit you on the counter. That is the type of football that we face against Porto that we were struggling to get by. So when people are saying, oh, well, we'll take a draw. Well, there's a lot of games in this run that ain't nailed on that we're going to win. Are we right. favourite against these teams? Yes, we are. But we know that football doesn't just run on who's the favourite. It's not as simple as that. You know, so uh, at the end of the day, Man United were Man United were not the favourites against Liverpool, yet they won. So no. it's not it's not as black and white as that. And I think the most unpredictable time of of the league is the last ten, eight, six games of the league. Mm -hmm. That is the most unpredictable because you you always get surprising results. So for us to say, oh well, just get a draw against Man City, we don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the games. You know what I mean? And and this is the problem. That's why for me it's a must win because not only by beating Man City do we have four points clear ahead of them, that sends a message out to Liverpool that have, I think now, the most pressure by Klopp saying that he's going to leave. That's put a tremendous amount of pressure on right. him. Because if you don't win it this season, your legacy is one Premier League. Right. right. So at the end of the day, they have pressure and we can mount more pressure on them by beating City. Two birds, one stone. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Beating City is good for our mentality, knocks City's confidence and knocks Liverpool's confidence and puts more pressure on them. So we got to win it. No, we absolutely have to win it. And and it, here's another thing too. It's just like, it, so we say we... Say we lose, City go, City go two points above us. Liverpool are going to be Brighton, I think, and then they'll go three points above us, and then it, then all of a sudden it looks really really long because then you're depending on um, Tottenham Hotspur or um, I don't think United, I don't think Liverpool play. Did Liverpool play United one more time? You're looking at you're looking at those kinds of teams. Okay, you're looking at but Tottenham plays all three of them. Pot Tottenham yeah, plays you're, us, you're looking, Liverpool, and City. Yeah, you're looking for Tot yeah, you're looking for Tottenham to 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 steal points away from them and I don't think they will. I mean, they're going to go up. They're they're Manchester City's bogey team, but they're going to get absolutely drowned at Anfield. There's I don't think there's any way that Spurs win that game at Anfield. So so you're depending on teams like Aston Villa who are tenuous at best, like I've already said, and you're depending on Tottenham Hotspur and you're depending on teams like Brighton and West Ham to do a job. They're not going to do it. You, we have to do the job ourselves. That is the difference between that. That is going to be the difference between the heartbreak of last year and us being successful this year. 
And I'm right. not even tired. I mean, and we're not even getting into, um, you know, our potential to go far into the Champions League because if we do go far, then our schedule, which is already congested, I think we have like seven games in 21 days or something oh, ridiculous crazy. like that. Like it, it's going to, it's going to get long and there are going to be injuries and certain people are going to need to step up. I mean, do we have the depth to go that far? Though that's where I go back and said, like on the show, like, why didn't we do any business in January? Because yep. we were hoping to be in this position. We are in this position and yet we didn't bring in one player. <laughs> I don't have my sandal. I don't have my slipper, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just, and that's the thing that upsets me the most. And that's why I think that this, this, all this hype, what we've been going through the, even this season, when you don't buy reinforcements in the window and we all looked at a striker, we kind of knew that that wasn't going to happen over as the window progressed, but not even a midfielder, not a winger, not, I mean, nobody. And that's nobody. where I just, like my, my hopes just get dashed right there. I mean, yeah. like, what are we supposed to do if we get three injuries? Right. I mean, what are we supposed to do? He doesn't rate anyone on the bench. You know, I'm just. Well, no, know, and that's man. another. Yeah, my no, go ahead. Sorry. The more I think about it, it just upsets me because we would be in such a better position for the city game, right? For having to go to shit fart lane, having to go to, you know, theater of nightmares and those great <laughs> places. But we don't necessarily have the reinforcements to do that. No, know, exactly. And here's like, if we get a draw against city, it's almost like, well, Praise Jesus, because they've been beating our ass since 2015. And I don't want to draw. I want to go smash them three or four nil, three one. But I just like in reality is that I, I don't think we have the squad depth to go through. Yeah, I. Yeah, now that you think about it, I mean, I was on who was I? No, I was on with Flawless and Tony Claude last night. Big up Tony Claude and Flawless. That that show was wild. Go back and watch that Sarcasm City TV. Um, but they were asking, uh, Foss was asking me, and maybe I want, I want to get your, get your thoughts on this, Dal. So we know, I think we know what our starting eleven is going to be. But who right. do we bring on as subs if we're, if we're tied nil, if we're tied nil nil or one one or whatever it's going to be? Because I think not it is going to be that close. I, it, well, no, not Eddie and Kenya. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Really? We got to bring in somebody. We got to bring in somebody I mean, Martin, to get offensive. We change up. We switch off Jorginho. Who are we bringing in? Who are we bringing in? Trossard or Rice, whoever doesn't start on the or not Trossard or Rice, Trossard or Jesus. Otherwise, right. Well, that's why we the have? players are so versatile, and that's why I don't now. understand why he hasn't gone out on a you know think a little bit outside the box and say, oh, I need a striker at nil nil in the 85th minute at the Etihad. Maybe I'll put Martinelli up there. You know, he doesn't think that way, and that's part of the problem as well. Is he has his specific players for specific positions. And then when something goes haywire, somebody gets injured, he starts rethinking and tinkering things. Just like when he went and looked in the mirror, you know, and realized he wasn't ready for the season or whatever shit he was going through. And I don't know. And since we've had a break, like we had the break in Dubai, this break may not be a good break. This may not be a good break. Yeah. Right? No, who are we? I mean, yeah. We haven't played well. We, we didn't play well against – England didn't play well against Brazil. England dieted with Belgium, right? I mean – the national, the international friendlies are going to have some effect. I, I just, I want to beat City so bad, guys, but I just have a feeling that uh, it ain't, this, this ain't going to be the weekend. <laughs> I mean, does does this manager have the the wherewithal to make changes to adjust to this team? Because I thought, I thought when we when we played at the Emirates, bro, we played low block, stinky football, and we got it. We got the win on the counter. I don't that's, know what that's we did what against Porto, though, because Porto was such a different thing than the 31 goals and 33 goals we conceded in the league, right? We went on this great run, and then we come across Porto, with, and we're sitting on our thumbs, and he has no idea of what to do, you know? And this is where I get so frustrated, and we're all gassed up, like, oh, yeah, city or this, city or that. Dude, we're going to the Etihad to play a team that's whooped our ass for 10 years. <laughs> I mean, let's be real about it. I mean, yeah, we're in great form right now, and we kind of the injuries aren't as bad. But I just, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I want to be as gassed as everybody else, but I think that like, if this break isn't good, like the, a draw will almost save us, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. We'll see, though. I mean, we'll see. I try to be opposite of Mister Negative, but it's it is what it is, man. I just you know I've been following this club for twenty five years. I just. 
you know, and, and, and no side hit it on the nail on the head. The teams get tougher as you get into the latter part of the season. There's more, you know, there's more to play for. I, I completely agree with that. You know, I just feel like, you know, when we go back and look at the history of Arsenal, you know, it is the history of the Arsenal. Big up Mike Doss in the chat, the absolute fraud. This guy, this guy, prime example of Liverpool being the underdog. This guy right here in the in the chat is here. Big up Mike Doss, I guess, you absolute fraud. Northside, how would you set how would you set up for this game, bro? I think we att- I, I don't think we have any um here's here's how I think about it. I don't think we we can sit back and and expect to counter and get it. We have to attack him. I think we have to meet him. Where do you what do you think we how do you set up for this game? I think that I would set up exactly how we set up against Brentford. The only thing I would change is I'd put Martinelli instead of Trossard. But I wouldn't be mad at Trossard starting. Um, I'd play Havertz, even though I don't rate him, just because he's the player that's in form. Um, But yeah, I'll do that. And we have to utilise Jorginho. Jorginho has to be at the base of everything that we start. Because we're not going to play through them, and we're going to hit them on the counter. We need Jorginho to pick up the runs from Martinelli and Saka. And um, that's what we need to do. Also, we need Ben White. If we're on the, on the counter, we need Ben White to keep spamming them crosses. I think he's done excellently in recent games. Spamming mm-hmm. crosses to, to Declan Rice and Havertz. We now have two players that, two target men, essentially, that we can cross the ball to. Whereas before, we didn't have that. So I think Ben White and Jorginho is going to be absolutely pivotal to the way that we play. Um, but that's how I'd set up. I think keep Kivio because I think Zinchenko is going to be exploited. I think playing Zinchenko will not make us solid. We need to be solid in this game. We're going to have limited chances, but when we do catch them, I think Man City like to play a high line. So yeah. when we receive the ball, hopefully Declan Rice is sweeping up and shielding the back line. He can pass it to Jorginho and Jorginho has got the vision and, and, and the right way to pass and the vision to, to get it to the front three. And that's how that's how we'll beat them. I think when we had the deflected goal against Man City in the last time with the Martinelli deflection, that was, a that was you know, um, one route football. We have to play like that. We, we need yep. long balls over the top and utilise our speed and try and catch out. You know, if they play Vardy and whoever they play, catch them out. You know, draw them into a false sense of security and then attack. The problem is we play a style of football that gives our front three an abundance of chances. Now, this game, we ain't going to have an abundance of chances because they're going to have most possession. So we have to be clinical with the limited chances. And to um, Dow's point, to Oregon Gunas' point, I get why he doesn't feel so confident because we don't have a gunman. We don't have a player that... You know, you give him two chances, he's at least scoring one. We don't have a clinical goal scorer. And this is the problem. You know, with limited chances, are these players going to be clinical enough? I know people are talking about Havertz and he's on a good run. He's never been a clinical goal scorer. He's never been that. We didn't bring him in as the answer to us getting 20 goals from one player. That's not what he was bought. That's not That's not him. So at the end of the day, you know, Sack is a good player, but he's not the most lethal goal scorer. He's a good goal scorer, but he's not the most lethal. Um, yeah. and, and and Martinelli's even worse in terms of goal ratio to, to Saka. So we don't have that. Even if you're bringing on Trossard, it's not guaranteed that he's scoring a goal because he's not a gunman either. So in games like this, this is exactly why I completely agree with Oregon Guna. When you're going up against teams where you get limited chances, you need someone that's going to bury those chances. They, those players are pivotal in these kind of games. And if you don't have it, it's kind of up in the air. Saka may turn up, may not. Havertz may score, he may not. Martinelli or Trossard may score, they may not. And if they don't, we're not going to be surprised because we don't look at them as our Harry Kane, you know, as our player like that, that you give them a chance and they're going to score more times than not. So this is the thing. I think we just need to utilise the fact that, you look, we don't have Partey. I think the most ideal situation is that we have Partey and Jorginho. People may say, oh, Declan Rice. Declan Rice is good with late runs in the box, but Declan Rice doesn't have the range of pass that Partey has. And if you have two mm. players that can play like that, then you've got Odegaard that can do the little one-twos. You've got more variety. And you've got two players that can, that can spring counter-attacks in Partey and Jorginho. Declan Rice doesn't have the same long range of passes as Rice. So I think no. they offer different things. And I think um, if we had Partey, I think it would be ideal because he can do the defensive work of Rice but he hasn't got the same passing. So 
yeah. it is what it, I'm still happy with Declan Rice, and you can use him as a target man, like I said. But um, I think Jorginho is going to be so pivotal. I don't think Odegaard. I mean, it depends because we have seen this season at times where we spring counter attacks and Odegaard's been direct. If we like, if we get that version of Odegaard, he can create and he can be dangerous. But that's you know, it depends what Odegaard you get because you don't get the same Odegaard week in week out. Yeah, no, and that's I I think that's who the linchpin is one hundred percent. I think I think it's it's going to come down to how Jorginho and how Martin Odegaard play, you know, that Declan Rice is going to come in and put a solid performance. I I mean, that guy, you, I can't name a match this season where he's been, he's put in an absolute shocker. So the, the West Ham away game. Okay. West, West Ham away. Oh, you yeah, mean the cup? Really, oh, you mean the cup? Really yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The cup. Was it the, the cup? cup. I don't know if it was the cup or the league. Yeah, no, it was, it was in the, well, did he even play in the cup? I don't even think he did. No, I think it was the I league. I think when he dropped points to West Ham, that was his only stinker because it was too much. That was at Remember? that was at that was at home too. That wasn't away. We oh, we, so we pammed them, them away. Yeah, we pammed them away. It was our place. Yeah, but whenever West Ham beat us, that's the worst game he's had. Yeah, I mean, I I just don't think. I mean, consistently, I think that he is the the rock. In our midfield, I, I I get nervous when people start talking about Partey and how he's going to come in here and be, the, you know, with his Ghanaian cape on and be the savior. I don't think he will. I, I think he looked very, very rusty against Sheffield. He, he played one, what, one clo behind closed door game against QPR and played a cup uh, and played a, had a cup of coffee against who? Against um, who? Do, who? Do we, I don't even remember who we played in the league last. Brentford. Like we we he he looked slow. And that's why I get a little nervous. Like, yeah, have him come on, be be a be a catalyst in the final 20, 30 minutes of the match. Yeah, I can I can listen to that. But I think you have to play Jorginho and Rice mm -hmm. in the double pivot in this match. I think you have to. Because Jorginho, while he may not, you know, he'll only give you the world class Jorginho maybe 10%, 15% of the time. But he ha he did step up against Liverpool. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. Yeah, honest. I think you don't you don't break what's you know you don't try and fix what's not broken, and bringing Thomas Party in for a game of this magnitude that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you know, that's a lot of pressure to put on a guy, even if he is you know 29, 30 years old. It's still a lot of pressure to come back basically from <laughs> injury and <laughs> you know living his life to the fullest on Instagram. But other than that, um, no, and I feel kind of the same way about Jesus. To be honest, there's there's a little bit I'm a little nervous. If Jesus gets in there and just tries and falls down and run around and be annoying but not score freaking goals, right? And so and I don't know if I want to see Jesus up there because have we've had success with Havertz up front. And it pain, it's a crazy thing to say. You know, not like Northside said, it's not like I don't rate him or anything. But it's just the <laughs> results are coming with him up front. I mean, it's evident. It's evident in the numbers. It's evident in how we're playing. If, if he's a physical body up front who could actually head the ball, push off center backs, and, you know, play a little back pass or something and find Trissard or Martinelli or Saka, you know, on a late run, maybe even Declan Rice. And that's where I think Declan Rice is more pivotal at the left mid role because he would, he's more of that attacking option up front. You know, I don't want him in the back cleaning up all the mess in front of the back four because that's what we've mm -hmm. seen him do before. And it's just it's it's not an effective way to use him, in my opinion. He needs to be the box to box you know, just the, the engine that we need. And I think he's a difference maker. He has been a difference maker. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he'll be the difference maker Sunday. But one question I have for Northside is, do you think Declan Rice will be a difference maker against Byron Munich? I do. Listen, defensively, yeah. Defensively, I do think so. Yeah, I think, I think he'll, he'll, be, he'll be good. I think, do you mean difference maker in terms of, why have he got over the line? A match winner? Just Declan Rice is doing his thing against Bayern Munich. You think they'll allow him to do it? You think he'll yeah. be able to yeah. perform against a nine-time Champions League score? You know? Yeah, yeah. Club, no, no, no. I, I think I think he'll be able to perform, but uh, we got to help him out. We got to help right. him out because they got they got too many weapons. But I think he, he'll do his thing, man. I, I've seen enough of him, and he, he's been consistent. So yeah, I, I do think he's one of the players that will turn up. Um, but we just need the whole team to turn up. I think when, when you mentioned Havertz and Jesus, I get what you're saying because Jesus came on in the last game and he's just not in form. I would only right. pick, I'm only picking Havertz because he's the player that's in form, not because I think that he's a better player. And I think you have to go with the player that's in form because Jesus right now is, 
he's he, he, he's rough at the moment. I saw him come yeah. on and he looked rough and hitting the side mm-hmm. net in, and it wasn't the Jesus that we've seen when you know when he when he's um when he's when he's flying and he's confident and he's got some momentum. So you have to go with Havertz because ideally, if both of them, if if Jesus didn't get injured, I would actually go with Jesus starting and I would use Havertz as the impact sub. You know, the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the game, you need a goal, right? White, start, you know, Ben White, start whipping in crosses to Havertz. Maybe we can get a goal. Um, right. Yeah, you have to play the player that's in form. I, I, I think playing players that are out of form, I think you're asking for trouble. I don't see Jesus putting out a good performance for 90 minutes Me when neither. he's coming back from injury. Against his old club, especially. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. just, I, yeah, I don't see it either, man. I think that's, that's, that's spot on. Man, I, I, Dal, I come on this show to feel good about um, how Arsenal are doing. Do you think that's a bad idea? Do you think that's a no, bad way to do it? Good about where we are, because I mean, look where we are four or five years ago. We were twentieth for fuck's sake at one point. I mean, this is like this is my wildest dream come true. It's taken twenty years to fucking get here, but we're here. <laughs> I mean, we Bro. haven't won anything yet, but we can. I know. First, we're in the Champions League. We're, we've we've overcome hurdles, and so there's nothing for me to say that I'm not gassed up about where we're at right now so yeah, I mean, any arsenal we, we, fans should be. yeah no absolutely and i am i am gassed but it's time to win i keep saying this over it's and over again and people are like um hold on let me address this and i'll get into it uh netweed we are going to do a call-in show very very soon so um this is a close stream i know uh north side has, has shows after this i have shows after this so um we gotta we're gonna have to wrap up within the hour so uh, make sure that you keep an eye on the community tab, people. We will have Colin shows. We're gonna bring in. We're gonna bring back Colin shows uh, during the yeah, off season too. So. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a blast when we do that. So yeah, I miss doing those. But yeah, big up everybody and a big again, big up AJ again for um, posting the subs. We're on the road to one K people. So make sure that you are smashing the likes. Subscribe to Northside's channel if you haven't already. If you uh, haven't subscribed to Northside's channel, you live under a rock. The link nah, is in nah, the title, nah. bro. <laughs> Go and set and smash the sub button on Northside's channel, people. Let's go. And then obviously, it goes without saying. Go and subscribe to Dow. Come on, give me a break, guys. Please. Um, big up Kyle as well. Um, oh, man, now I completely lost what I was gonna say. I knew I was gonna Jesus. do that. We're talking about Jesus and if he should come back or not. Or I think I, I said this yesterday too, and um, a lot of people gave me crap about it, but Jesus on the wing, man, is not something that we should we should raise an eyebrow or raise our noses up at. I really don't. I think that um, if Martinelli isn't ready to go, we should, we should seriously consider playing Ooh. Jesus on that left side. I mean, the way that he played against Manchester city without, without Saka when Saka was injured, I thought he played very, very well when he has played on the wings. He has played well generally. So, I mean, he's, he's not a number nine. He's admitted it himself. He doesn't want to play in the number nine. He doesn't look like he wants to play in the number nine. He's hitting the floor anytime he gets in the six yard box. And I just, I, I just don't believe he's comfortable there. So if think, we're going to, oh, go ahead. Sorry to Do you think he'll play Jesus guys against Byron Munich and just play Havertz in the league? I don't think so. I don't think Why so. Why not use Trossard for the middle? Like now that I'm thinking about even more, I may not even start Havertz in this game against City. I might even put Trossard through the middle. Play Hazu, uh, play Martinelli and Saka on the wings, and then use Havertz as an impact sub. I mean, I, I guess against Byron, I think you know German, German versus German. I can see, but maybe there's a case for Jesus and bringing Havertz know, on. Man. He's looking scrappy. Munich. He's looking scrappy. Like I'd rather see Jesus in other games. You know what I mean? Like when we're playing Leeds and other teams like that, and, and maybe Brighton and and get it, get him up to speed. But listen, we didn't do too bad last season and this season at times when we're playing Trossard through the middle. True. You know what I mean? So, I, I listen. I I'm actually I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I, I think I'll play Trossard through the middle, Martinelli left, and Saka on the right. Um, I know people are saying that Jesus is getting better in the transition, um, but. Nah, man, I, I don't really rate the player. I'd rather use him as an impact sub. When, when we got him and he started scoring some games later on, um, as um, late, he was scoring some goals, like scoring some headers and stuff, I'll use him as an impact sub. Mm. I think Trossard gives us a better 90 minutes. And when he's on it, he's, he's a good finisher, Trossard. He's actually a decent finisher. He, he's the one that kept us in the tie against Porto. So, right. Yep. right. 
Right. That was a great goal. Yeah, but has but has Trossard been a very good starter? I would argue that Havas hasn't been a very great star. We <laughs> yeah, carried him there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. Is like yeah. neither that's the thing, is that in my opinion, we have very good players, but we don't have great, and you need great to win it all. And that's that's where we begin. We do shit in January, and this is what we end up with. We could have had another option of a midfielder slash center forward or something coming off the bench. You know, the idea was for Havertz to replace Odegaard. Or not replace him, but, you know, sub in for Odegaard. And that hasn't happened at all. So, no. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I think... I think with, with Havertz, there's a lot of recency bias with some Arsenal fans. Oh, he's mm. performing now, but That's I think he's got, what, seven, eight goals? Eight. 20, 20, yes. Like 20 appearances, 19, 20 appearances. Yeah. We were carrying him, absolutely yeah. carrying him, you know? So, and the thing is, it's not even proven. People are saying that, oh, but, you know, the front three, Martinelli, Trossard, Saka is not match winners. Well, neither is, Trossard, neither is Havertz, bro. Did he win? Did he win it for us in ninety minutes against Porto over the two legs? No, he didn't. So it's not really a hundred percent that he's going to get us through this tie either, like this game. So I, I get you, Oregon, because it's like none of them are a hundred percent match winners. That you can right. say, yeah, you could put your cap That's on and true. say, yeah, hundred percent, he's, he's going to be the guy. The same way that Liverpool will look at Salah or you know City at the start of the season anyway, could say that about Haaland or can say about De Bruyne now, could say about Foden that's shown up in pivotal times. We don't really have that. But right. I don't forget the 20 games that Havertz wasn't performing. And I don't forget as well against Porto, a lesser team, a team that's nowhere near the level of Man City. You wasn't the difference to get us over the line. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Neither was Trossard. I just think that Trossard offers a lot more. And as a footballer, I think he's a lot better. Whereas Havertz, bro, I, I, this guy is still shocking, bro. It's still oh, yeah. shocking. So yeah, I, he's I, clumsy. I'm on mute. The, glaze, the glazing that is going on for Kai Havertz, and look, he has bailed. He bailed us out against Brentford. I will give him that. Big Brentford. He he did his job. Thank you for doing that. But the glazing that some of this fan base is doing for Havertz. Oh, respect Havertz, King Kai, Bergkamp, whatever you know, Kai Bergkamp ridiculous <laughs> people that are saying that completely disrespect the history I of this club anyway yeah. we keep going all i'm Easy. saying all i'm saying is is look you, he has to be more consistent before i before i sign on to to anything having to do with number 29 i'm sorry I, I i i'm just not there yet i'll never be there but the problem is is that i don't see up the middle i don't see anybody else that can take on man city we need the size in the middle is, Mark, is my opinion i know that's why i've always been an advocate for Martinelli up front. He's, I, I just, I don't know why that is so, why Arteta seems so opposed to that. Like he'll play Trossard up front, he'll play Havertz up front, he'll play fucking Nketi up front, he'll play Jesus up front, but he won't give his left, left winger slash center forward a, a, a shot. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just, like, I don't know either. Like Norse, I said, we just don't have our Harry Kane. We don't have a Ronaldo. We don't have a Messi, obviously. And we don't have, a, you know, a, a Jude Bellingham type. Yeah. You know, it can I, just absolutely change the fortunes. You know, we just yeah. don't have that there yet. And, yeah, you know, and it's coming. At the risk, at the risk of sounding overly positive, because we need to win this game. So I'm just, I'm just. I don't know why I'm just choosing to be positive on this one. Jeez, I'm probably okay. going to regret it. I'm I'm probably gotten clipped up like seven thousand times this week. I don't even want to talk about it. But what I'm going, to, what I will say though, is that if you're talking about an outfield ten that have gelled very, very well, we have that outfield ten. Whereas the Manchester City team that is going to get fielded do not always play with each other. This is right. not their starting eleven that they have started with for the last three, you know, for the last three months where we've been going on a complete tear. So I, we have to get it done by committee. We have to lock up Holland by committee. You know, it's going to be on Rice. It's going to be on Jorginho. It's going to be on um, Starsky and Hutch to, launch, to, to lock that guy up and to lock up KDB and to lock up Foden. Like, we have right. a gargantuan task ahead of us. And, and and that's I, where I said before, like, if, if it's nil-nil, you know, at the Eddie had in the 88th minute, and a ball, long ball comes into Holland and it bounces over Gabrielle's head, and the bozo gene shows itself. We're back where we started again. 
And that's why I don't want to get too hyped because all it takes is one mistake, you know, to just fuck it all up for us. I'm sorry. The worst thing that we can do is concede early. I think if we're I think if we're in it, um, if we can get out of the first 45 without conceding, I think we have a chance. But you know, you're gonna what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the in the first 15 minutes, there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of energy, they're gonna go at each other, and then I think the game slows down. And then you get you go you get into the second half, and then they you hopefully can get something out. I mean, it's not I don't see more than three goals in this match. I don't. And we'll, we'll get into predictions here in like in a couple of minutes, but I don't see I don't see it being that that high scoring of a game. I really don't. Ugh. All right. Do we want to get in? Uh, I'm stressed out thinking about it, bro. I, I can literally feel my my beard graying. Right I can literally feel it. Everybody. <laughs> I just, Dude. I just, I mean, I, we know how this show goes, right? I mean, we were here last year, and you know, I just don't want to say <laughs> deja vu here. bullshit. And we were there in 2008. We were there in 2015, 16 when Lester went on to win it. I mean, I just, you know, and uh, like I said before, I tried to make my case with guns on the show is that there's still like 10, 11 weeks of football to play. It's still a lot of games left. You know, but then of course Northside throws in the Chelsea thing, and you're right. We could totally take a shit with Chelsea. They could <laughs> totally beat us two or three nil, two or three nil. We totally could because we know what's happened before. You know, oh my, we, we know what this movie's like at the end. So I'm ready to get in predictions wherever you guys are. Yeah, let's let's, let's get into predictions. By the way, guys, big up, big up, um, big up everybody that's still inside watching. There are a ton of people streaming right now, so make sure that you are smashing the likes. Thank you for being here. We got Northside here. We got Dow here. We are going to get into predictions for the weekend, and then we are going to send you to Staffy TV where we are going to talk more about this Man City game. You know what? You know what's going to be great about this too is when it's over because I don't want to talk about Man City anymore. I can't stand <laughs> these guys. I hate this team. A division two frauds. Bro, I I just can't the, these these 115 yeah, charge having MFers, bro. I can't stand them. I can't fucking stand this. Who's the Greek I can't striker. stand their fans. What? Remember Samaras? They had Samaras for a while. George Samaras. Remember that guy? He was from Celtic. Dude, Man City nah. frauds. And I can't stand Man City. I'm sorry. And and and, and here's the thing: is it's like I I think I'm just tired. Of, I'm just ready for it to happen. The build up to this has been going on. For two and a half weeks since we got out of the Porto match, and now we're just like, now it's just like, okay, I'm ready to like watch the football, watch the club football, relieve this fucking pressure, please, relieve this pressure. Let's go. Anyway, again, Northside, thanks for joining us, my guy. You want to get into some predictions real quick? Let's do it. My prediction? Yeah, like we're gonna we're gonna do we run on the show we run through. Predictions for the entire for the entire league, real quick, and then last but not least, we'll give the prediction for the Manchester City Arsenal match. But we'll, okay, dude, cool. I, I got I got to be honest, I got to be honest, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk over anybody, but this game this week is dead. This <laughs> outside of Manchester City Arsenal, I think this the, the matchups really? are absolutely yes. Ones. Well, let's put them up on the board. Let's put them oh. up on the board. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Bro, yeah. I think it's dead, bro. Brentford I really do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brent Brentford United is okay. Newcastle West Ham, meh. Like the well, and the other see. only other one is like Liverpool and Brighton. Brighton can be a bogey team for Liverpool. If Liverpool but, Brighton draw, we draw the city. We're right back where we started. I don't think they're I don't think Liverpool have a prayer. Or, or, I don't think Liverpool drop any least. points to Brighton at home. I don't what do you got to say, North Side, on some of these scores here? Uh, Newcastle, West Ham. I think West Ham win that. Ooh. I think West Ham. I think West Ham will win that. I know they got a the draw against Aston Villa, but I see West Ham winning that. What do you got? What do you got for a score? I'm gonna go two one West Ham. Okay. Two one. Two one. Dow, what do you got? What do you got for West Ham, Newcastle? I'm gonna girl? go two two. Two two draw, okay, yeah. and we'll go back, That's and we'll go back into last week uh, here in a minute because it was bad. It was really bad. Play along in the chat too, by the way, if you want to be on the infamous spreadsheet, people, the infamous Microsoft Excel. We are really, really high tech here, people. High tech. Put it in the comments at the end of the show, and we will run with it. Um, West Ham Newcastle. 
I'm going two one West or no two one Newcastle. Sure about that? Can you believe that 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 Tenali news though? By the way, no. What news is that? Dude, he got caught. He got caught gambling again. Uh huh. Dude, yeah. He's done. He's American. He's, he's, he's American. Northside, we were in the back. Northside, we were in the back. Northside was like, man, you you Americans really like gambling. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he wants to go to Vegas, man. Wow. He got caught in Vegas. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's it's too bad, man. For anywhere. It's too bad. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, we got 22 inside. Make sure you're smashing the likes. Make sure you are subbing to the channel if you are new people. Yeah, I'm going I'm going to one Newcastle. Something tells me something tells me West Ham are going to drop a stinker. And Newcastle are Newcastle are tough to beat at home. Um Burnley Chelsea. God, see this is the this is the dead stuff I'm talking about. That's 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 Chelsea, man. Chelsea winning. Yeah. Chelsea yeah. What do you what do you what do you got scores? Score-wise. Uh, I'm going to put 3-1 Chelsea. What Chelsea? That's fair. Dal, what do you got? Uh, Burnley, yeah. I'm going to go 4-0 Chelsea. Oh. Big up, Eli. Big, Big up, up, Eli, every time. All right, go. My center back, by the way. My center back. 1-0 Burnley. 1-0 Burnley, Hugo! Yeah. Go on, Hugo. That's, that's, that's a lot of... That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, faith. Um, yeah, he's got money he's... on it. That's why he's got money on it. That's yeah. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> Hugo is American, so yeah. Tenali, yeah. It's what I mean, man. You know what I mean. If you're gonna do this, do it with the Americans, man. You lot know what you're doing. You know what I mean. I'm, I'm going. Lost. I'm going. Uh, yeah, I'm going two one, two one Chelsea, two one Chelsea on that stinky. I don't think Burnley, Burnley are gonna go are gonna get sent down fighting. I think. Um, Fulham visiting Sheffield. Interesting. Two no Fulham. Two no Fulham. Maybe yeah, I should. Agrees. Maybe I can make some money, man. If my prediction. No, I might. No, no, no. I might. I might start throwing, throwing like little, little cheek, little cheeky fivers around just to see. Uh, <laughs> I really see if we can see two. if we can hit a parlay. I think a two nil is a fair. No, fair score for Fulham. Yeah, you know what? I always wanted to play the slot machine. You know the. I always wanted to play that, man. Dude, but... we 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 were born too late, Northside. They don't even have that. I mean, you could do the cha-ching thing, but they don't have the coins anymore. It's but... all digital. Oh, so yeah, dead. yeah. Unless you go to like, I don't know if you could like go to like Reno or something like that and find that. Just, but probably uh, not. No. it's all digital now. If you get a piece of paper, Dude. bro. You got to pick it up to the window. They give you your. Bro, cash. we were. We were, I was, I was robbed because when I was a kid and I was like walking, walking by the casinos, like in Blackhawk and in Vegas, when I, whenever my parents would take me out there, yeah, my parents took me to Vegas, not a big deal. Um, I was always just like, oh man, this is free. Oh, the the coins dropping, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. you can hear it all over the casino, dude. It was, it was fun oh, times. Dude, fun times in the nineties. Ad- ad- addicting, addicting too. <laughs> uh, oh what, oh what those carpets have seen. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do. 2-1. I think Sheffield will get a goal, but it's going to be 2-1 Fulham. Um, Crystal Palace visiting Forest. Forest fighting for their lives after a point deduction. What do you got? North side. Uh, I'm going to go Palace 1-0. Forest have got a new manager. I think 1-0. 1-0 mm. Palace. Not 1-0 yeah, Palace. Dow? I, I think that's 1-1. One one draw. Yeah. Sorry, Forrest. I'm, Sorry, yeah, I'm you... copying off. Of, I'm copying off of North Side. I'm copying North. I'm copying off North Side. I'm going one nil Crystal Palace. I want Eze, man. Bola. You know what Eze. I mean? Turn up. Get yeah. Get bring Sa to the carpet. That's all I gotta say. Bring Sa to the carpet. That guy is an absolute baller, bro. Absolute baller. Oh, um, out, Everton visiting Bournemouth. I spelled Bournemouth wrong. Good. Um, North Side, my guy. I really don't rate. Every, I really don't rate both of them. But I'm gonna put. Uh, mm, I'm gonna put mm, one nil Everton. Ooh. He struggled with that one. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna go two two. I think there's some goals in that. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm full of the. Both have got Solanke in it. Yeah, no, but Solanke. I mean, he had the one good month. Who we were linked to? Oh boy, that was a uh, exciting. <laughs> it was our savior, in it. <laughs> Fuck. It's, I don't like, it's, I like, what? it's like what? Edu does not know the European market. I'm sorry if he's looking at fucking Solanke. Jesus <laughs> Bro, Eddie and Kenny is twin bro. brother. I think, I think that would be right. I think it'll be a draw. I think deep down, I think uh, you're probably right. That's the safer bet. Everton well, fighting for their lives, man. Too, they're they're they could TJ be in trouble no too. Jesus, I know. Fine, fine, fine. I'll go two one Everton. I think Everton <laughs> will get it done. Jesus. Um, Luton Town Tottenham. Oh, this is off of hope. Um. Two one Luton off of hope. That this ain't this ain't. Uh, this you got no money on this, so you can put you can put whatever yeah. you want down. I'm just saying, Luton, come on Luton, man, come on, man. <laughs> come on. We need you to do it. Come on, my guys, man. Come on. You know what I mean? <laughs> David versus Goliath. Come David on, man. I. I don't. I don't see. I just don't see it. It just sucks. It sucks. And I don't like. I don't like predicting Tottenham wins. Two, three, two Tottenham. Uh, I think Luton will score. Luton will score. Luton will score. But that 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 high line, man. That high, that Tottenham high line and the Luton just doesn't have the quality, unfortunately. Bro, they, they don't have the quality, bro. We lost. We we won against them last minute, man. Bro. That was David Reyes' worst game. We he put in an absolute stinker in that game. It should not have been that bad. And I, and I'm a David Reyes stand. Don't get me wrong. Like I I'm a big David Reyes fan. But he was he was pony, bro, in that game. Pony. Um, just my opinion. Wolves visiting Aston Villa. Uh, two nil Villa. I think Tielemans and Watkins turn up. Yeah. Uh three one Villa. Bailey with a brace. I wish I was as positive as Eli. Um yeah, put him in a split, bro. Two one two one two one villa. I got a lot of I got a lot of two ones and three ones. Or Mostly just two ones. Yeah, Villa won't lose this. I agree. I agree. My guy. Gun down. Big up gun down every time. Big up Arsenal Manic as well. I see you, bro. Um, all right. Coming down to the wire. United visiting Brentford. Mm. So that's see, that's it's one of the better Draw. games. One one. One one. Mm. Hopefully they lose, man. I want to see a Saeed meltdown. I need yeah, I need a <laughs> We no the the streets the streets need it because our uh, the ops are getting a little bit too comfortable. Guys like Flawless getting a little bit a little bit too comfortable for me. I'm not gonna lie. He's just sitting. He's just sitting there. Yeah, I know we're in the mud, but I still need. I need. I need him further in the mud. That's the point. I need him further in the mud. What do you got, Dow? Three two the scum. Yeah. They ain't won a game in six games, man. Brentford. To be honest, yeah, you're probably right, Dow. I can't even lie. Yeah. They but then again, that could be a catalyst to them turning up. Yep. I, don't know. I want I'm going two one Brentford for so I can dunk on Staffy on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I'm going two one. I'm going two one Brentford. All right. Last two, last two, last two. Let's go. Brighton and Hove Albion visit <laughs> Liverpool. Two one Liverpool. Dow, put it out into the universe. I know you want to. 3 0 Liverpool. <laughs> AJ saying 5 0 Liverpool. Uh, I'm going 3 2 Liverpool, unfortunately. They scored two goals, huh? I think they'll score two. I think they'll score two because I isn't Allison still out. Yeah, but Keller has been done well. But, but, but to be, yeah, be fair, really Keller well. has been good. But Brighton, Brighton have been a, a little bit of a bogey team to, to towards Liverpool as well. I think um, sure. who was they were on your channel last night, Northside, when they were saying um, 
Lee and um, Hussam were talking, and Liverpool doesn't have a great record against Brighton. Yeah, but so records are there to be broken. Yeah, that's Thanks. true. Just ask Thanks. Arteta. <laughs> 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 Good or bad, it's still a broken record. <laughs> still fair. Still fair, though. Still yeah. fair. All right. And then last, last and not least, the marquee matchup. Everybody's been talking about it. I Personally, I can't wait for it to be over. Northside, what do you got? Arsenal, Man City. 1-1. One, one. Man, that's that, that that's so level-headed. It stinks. Well, I'm between. No, that it's true. It's winning. true, though. No, it's true, though, bro. It, I I can see it. I can see it. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm nervous in the game, man. It's hard, man. Hard, man. Uh, I kill the. I bring. The, I just suck the excitement out of the stream, don't I? With my <laughs> oh my god. god. Well, my prediction is going to be 2-1 Arsenal, Declan Rice in the 89th minute. Uh, is that what you're going with? Yeah. Oh. Right. Mystic, Mystic Dal, isn't it? I hope you're Mystic right. Dal, bro. <laughs> that's, my new, that's my new gamer name. <laughs> yeah. Morgan, Mystic Dal. 2-1 City. <laughs> I know Moody. Joanne thinks City is going to win. Um, I, I, I There's a lot of positivity in the chat, and I'm – I, I've I've been going with this, and I'll 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 say it again. I think it's going to be two one Arsenal. I think we're going to score twice, and they're going to try to come back, and they won't be able to do it. And they're going to put a they're going to give us a heart attack. Um, I think we score. I think we score at the beginning, coming out of the tunnel in the second half twice, and then they'll they'll make a sweat at the 80, 80, 85th minute. That is my that is my prediction. Oh, Joanne's thinking we're going to win. See, even Joanne's being positive. What is going on here? Yeah, but if we uh, if we lose, I mean, and if if we get say we get over, the, go out there and get absolutely turned over, it's going to get dark really quick. Um, so yeah, those are the predictions, people, for this game week. the The run to the championship starts now. The run to the title starts now. People, get your predictions into the comments after the stream ends. And that is where we are going to wrap up. Big up Northside again for joining us, my man. Again, you are welcome back on the channel anytime, bro. It has been an absolute pleasure. I've been a fan for a while. So um, having you on is an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Really, really appreciate it, man. Um, shout your channel out, man. What do you got going coming up? No, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Northside LDN, that's the only thing I'm on, not on Twitter. IG, yeah, but there's no content there. So all the content's on, on YouTube, Northside LDN. And um, yeah, man, big up to, to you, Oregon Guna. Big up to you, TJ, sure. for inviting me on. Do you know what I mean? And and soon hitting 1K, man. Soon hitting 1K. I'm telling wow. you, fly. You know what I mean? Once There's you reach 1K, then it's 5K. You know what I mean? Once you reach 1K. That, that grind to 1K is the hardest thing in right. this YouTube thing. That is the hardest grind. Because you're literally starting with no momentum, like up until 1K. It's like people still getting to know you, still knowing your content and that. Keep pushing, yeah. man. Keep pushing. Because it wasn't that long ago that I was at 1K. And people don't realize how much persistence you have to have and belief in yourself right. to, to get it going. So big up to you, man. I respect anyone Appreciate that makes it, channels and stuff because I know how hard it is. And it's hard. It ain't easy. That's why when people talk rubbish in the comments, where you got you guys got some real ones in your chat, the, the, <laughs> top, the negative ones hasn't uh, infiltrated yet. You know what I mean? They don't realize. You know, oh, they get. Oh, they it. come. They come. Yeah, <laughs> they'll they be here. They, they're much, here. How much time it takes, man, and um, and and dedication to to what you're doing because it ain't right. easy, and and you're still running a full time job. But if you got kids and things like that, ain't easy. Really, ain't easy. You know, so. Big up to you, man, and keep pushing, keep grinding. It, Thank you. And um, yeah, just get ready, man, because you're just gonna work even harder. That like, the bigger <laughs> you get, the harder people. Will be, oh, you get nah. It's like oh crap, I got to work even harder. Flipping out. Yeah. So, yeah man, listen, all the best, man. I, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. Just be persistent. Right. And you're gonna be. I, pr I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. What What did yeah, you say, Dell? TJ Floors. Oh God, no! Don't do that. Don't do that. TJ no, no, Fleur. I got. Uh, when the day I go, the day the day I go on the terrace is the day people leave my channel. I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> Dal, cut your stuff out, bro. Okay, this was a lot of fun again. Fifty third episode with Northside in the building. 
Let's I've been go. I've subscribed both sides for a long time. I left man super chats. I went on his channel one time. I was high as fucking drunk. He put a link <laughs> on there. And I was like, huh? He's like, what's up, man? I'm like, huh? I was, oh, my so God. Reason. He probably doesn't even remember. I was on there for literally like 10 seconds. And I was like, oh, God, I got to get out of here. That's yeah, the vibe. It was, it was a while been, back. But, um, no, I've seen your side, your channel grow to the north side off. From, I think I probably started watching you around seven, 800 subs or so, maybe 1,000 subs. So, All right, you were there. Yeah, you've been grinding for a while. Flipping out. You see what I'm saying? See what yeah, I'm saying? It might have been Oregon Goon at the time. It might have been a different different name. But, uh, yeah, you and Lee and everybody. And I'm just glad that it's great to have you with us and this part of this community and so forth because it really is an extension of what Lee and Jez and some of, you know, and even yourself have put together with the likes of Ola, you know, and so forth. And shout out Ola for being in the chat earlier. Big up, um, yes. Yeah, so I just 100%. feel like it's great to have, you know, a, a very, very prominent member of the community on the show today, Northside. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, and I've seen your background. I see all the footballs. That's changed over the time as well, bro. <laughs> so I know that the <laughs> – I know Yo, you're doing Fiverr, well. Fiverr. Go on Fiverr, that Fiverr, Fiverr, yeah. Go on okay. that Fiverr. They've got loads of people that make the, right. the like, studio background, and then that's it. That's Go on Fiverr. You'll probably pay 50, 60 pounds, dollars. You're speaking a really good and, one, yeah. Yeah, man, and, and, and you'll do that, man. But listen, now, now thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. So Oregon Gooner, yeah, you see it. You see the struggle. You see that. I've seen the struggle. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? So, sure. Definitely. And, um, possible, was, man. Um, yeah, and even like during like COVID, a lot of the shows you had going on with the Fawad, really got me through so yeah those were great shows and i appreciate thank that you, so you. um dude yeah, shout that's out another to that's another guy oh my god that's another guy so we gotta I'm get back squad. on the channel yeah. bro yeah, yeah, oh yeah, man um he's a real, real one too a uh, little diluted but a real one um anyway thanks for everyone in the chat for being here today thanks tj thanks north side a great episode today happy friday everyone let's enjoy the weekend stay safe hug your loved ones and take us out tj Absolutely. This has been the 53rd episode of the American Idiot Show, people featuring Northside. Make sure that you go and subscribe to Northside if you haven't already. We are going to go ahead and send you over to El Ahua. We're going to go send you over to Husam. Go over there. Say TJ Warren TV Raid. And um, who, do they got Hamza on there? Just put in Hamza as a fraud in the chat. Let them know. Actually, no. Put Actually, no. Put Jacob as a fraud. Jacob's on that panel. Go put Jacob as a fraud in the chat. Spam it. Um, and if you're watching this on playback, make sure that you are putting your comments in. Did you like the show? Smash a like. Did you not like the show? Smash a like. Don't be a dick. You know, we're trying to grow something here for the love of God. Right. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, you're we are out of here. here. <laughs> Come on, you gunners. We will see you at the watch. Right. Actually, no, I got to plug my show. I for completely forgot. I'm all over the place today. We got um, I'm going to be live on Safi's channel here in about an hour um, to do another preview of the Arsenal Man City match. And then we will be back. <laughs> for the watch along 15 minutes before kickoff on Sunday until then big up everybody in the chats. We'll see you big next up. time. Cheers.